I call Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, uh, I'm pleased that uh, the member Gareth Hughes has acknowledged that this process has been less than ideal, um, because, in in my view and in the view of the Labour opposition, um, this whole um, debate, this whole bill, has been a colossal waste of time, uh, and. He talked about choice and, it, and that it gives choice. Yes, it gives choice of a fifth option, but it's a half choice that's been provided to the people of New Zealand. Uh, major missed opportunity to actually make this whole process in this flag referendum have integrity and be a process of which we as New Zealanders, all New Zealanders, can be proud and know that we're getting the right questions being asked. And, um, and I want to actually uh, shout out respect to the New Zealand First for their consistency through this debate. I haven't agreed, certainly, with everything that's being said, and there are things that have been said that I haven't liked, but I respect their right to speak, and I respect their consistency, and I respect their passion on this issue. And unfortunately, um, this whole debate, this whole issue of a flag and changing our flag and a flag referendum has descended into something that New Zealanders feel deeply uncomfortable about and deeply embarrassed about. And it is something that they should feel unified around, even if they don't agree on the choices of, uh, of design, so-called design. But they should feel proud of the process that has been undertaken and that they have been respected. Well, Mr Speaker, they haven't. They haven't been respected at all. 70 per cent of New Zealanders said they don't want to change the flag. They're not getting the opportunity to vote on that first in the referendum. And that is the missed opportunity. And that is the, the, um, the issue on which Labor has been utterly consistent. Uh, and if the Greens had been consistent, they would have voted for Andrew Little's um, amendment to this bill, and I think that, and as well, was a missed opportunity. Mr Speaker, our economy is in trouble. We've got state houses making kids sick and, in some cases, die. We've got um, a real... We've got zero-hour contracts. We've got issue after issue after issue of substance. And here we are in urgency with a bill that changes the You've options us, um, of the number of flags that can be on a referendum ballot. What an embarrassment. Is this, is this the state that New Zealand has come to, that this is where we spend the House's time? Um, we should have started off with a proper discussion around national identity. I know pretty much all of the opposition parties agree on that. Well, why can't we have that discussion now? Why can't we talk about what our national um, identity is, whether New Zealand should have a constitution? Are we mature enough as a nation to have our own head of state? Should we start the steps to becoming an independent nation? And what is the role and of the Treaty of Waitangi and how can we ensure that that is given precedence and, and, and due respect? Are our voices and our stories being invested in in this country? Those are questions that we should be asking. We are the only nation in the OECD that does not have a television, a public television broadcaster. Our Radio New Zealand, which is our public broadcaster, has been starved of funding for seven years. And here we are spending $26 million on a flag referendum on a process which is deeply flawed and which has made New Zealanders feel deeply uncomfortable and embarrassed. This has not transcended politics, this bill in urgency before the House. This is 
utter politics, and it's a deal that's been stitched up and put before the House in urgency, and it's undermined the expert panel, um, and I do want to um, acknowledge them. They also must be feeling deeply uncomfortable by this whole process, deeply uncomfortable, and as if their goodwill and their knowledge has been undermined. Mr Speaker, I've got, I acknowledge the public pressure for the red peak um, flag designed to be included. 50,000 people signed a petition. Um, in the end, it's not even mentioned in the bill. And, and, the, and the member, Gareth Hughes, says that that's constitutionally correct. Well, if that's the case, then we would be putting bill after bill after bill through this House, which just says to the Governor-General, oh, well, go on, you make the decision, because we don't constitutionally think that we can. Well, this is the Parliament. We get to say what we think should be in the legislation. And whether it's good law or not can be judged by the people. But ultimately, it's the Parliament that decides what the specifics are that should be in the legislation, not the Governor-General. And that is a really important point, and it perhaps is, is, is another reason as to why we should have a wider discussion about um, whether or not we need a constitution and a constitutional discussion, just so that everybody can be clear about what their roles are. Um, so, that again made this whole process into a farce. A bill calling that, that we've spent hours and hours and hours discussing that gives another option for this flag called Red Peak, but it's actually not mentioned in the bill. Um, this referendum process, Mr Speaker, is wrong. It's round the wrong way. And New Zealanders know that it's round the wrong way and they're going to be subjected to having to make a choice in a way that they don't want to make the choice. And that is why Labor has been utterly consistent in its approach. It is why we offered to work with the government in good faith and were rejected. And it's why we're standing here today saying that this process has been wrong from the beginning. This should have been a process that unified us. It hasn't. And, um, and instead, we've, we've ended up with an X-factor competition um, a, a, instead of a respectful process with the public. We, we should have had a discussion about our national identity, of who we are and where we're going. And that is why the likely outcome um, of this bill is not going to be to the government's um, liking. And it's they who are utterly responsible for it. Utterly responsible. It has been a shambles from beginning to end. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's been a shambles that has, where the New Zealand um, Parliament uh, has been treated with disrespect, where the New Zealand public has been treated with disrespect. And, uh, and, and, by, and we've been treated as if we're puppets or muppets. And, uh, and I know that most people can see through it. In my constituency in Dunedin South, this is not the issue on the agenda. This is not the issue that people want to talk to you about on the streets or in the supermarkets. What they want to talk about is the fact that there aren't enough jobs in our regions. Um, that there aren't that the state of our housing is terrible. That the, the st that the government needs to fix state houses. That there aren't enough state houses. That private rentals are too expensive, and that there is no warrant of fitness on housing. Those are the things that are important, Mr. Speaker. Those are the things that people want to talk about. This flag has become a debate. This flag referendum has become an embarrassment. It's a travesty. It treats people as if they're idiots um, and as if they can be manipulated. And the, the New Zealand public cannot and should not, should not be manipulated. They should be treated with respect. And unfortunately, um, this government um, and this deal that's been stitched up through this process has not treated New Zealanders with respect.